Do, 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 do. There's a raging ice storm going on outside. Don't you love freezing rain? I sure do. I wonder if the government of Canada realizes now who actually has the power. People that deliver the food, the clothing, the grocery, the gas, the oil, the natural gas, the luxury items, the eBay items. <laughs> kind of like the lifeblood of the entire country. All these uh, pseudo-intellectual people that think they have power, they actually realize where the real power is at. This is not a video about Canada, by the way. It's actually about natural order and uh, strength versus uh, weakness. Which there's different types of strength. I mean, I'm basically fat and tattoo ink, as anybody with two eyeballs and half a brain can see. Most people, unfortunately, suffer a herd mentality. There are people that know better, but don't do better because they cherish comfort physical comforts, yeah? And there are other people that actually cherish something else that's ineffable, like freedom. It's like, well, freedom doesn't put food on the table and it doesn't give you nice clothes and it doesn't make you, you know, popular. But, you know, when you do the things that other people like, that makes you popular and that gives you money and that does things for you. It's like, well, that's true, but that's the inferior way. That's the weak way. That's the wrong way. They call that the left-hand path. It's a branch of metaphysical teachings, I actually um, tell people about. <clears throat> it's physically weak and obviously physically strong. I'm not interested in talking about that. Everybody could actually see the difference. I find it interesting, though, even though I've never been physically strong, even though I used to like do 400 sit-ups a day and ride my bike 30 miles a day. People see my early videos where I was really skinny. I find it interesting that some of these skinny people that are so tough and they basically don't feel pain anymore can do like a thousand times the endurance limit that these people that are super seriously pumped up. I know there's a, a, uh, a physiological reason behind that, but I've always thought that was really fascinating. These guys that are like basically nothing, but they got like 0% body fat and they pump iron all day long and absolutely everything they eat is measured out. Yet like this um, aging 58-year-old or 60-year-old uh, skinny guy who's like a Iraqi war veteran, you know, is kind of skinny and wiry. is like the human version of beef jerky. <laughs> it doesn't look extremely muscular. Well, always like in an endurance test, you know, they always will beat, you know, the super muscular guy by a thousand miles. I don't know what that actually says, but that kind of means something. But anyway, I'm not discussing physical weakness versus strength, rather ineffable things about natural order and things that are superficially metaphysical. <clears throat> I debated uh, certain aspects of metaphysics for decades. And one of the key things, and it's really extremely apparent today, is that the people that want to shut you down, shut you up, and I could talk about uh, Mr. Rogan, but I'm not, but I think everybody that has two years know, knows what's been happening to him recently, and I'm not interested in discussing him. The people that can't debate the topic, they want to shut you down, they want to shut you up. Well, we have to ask ourselves the question, and whatever you think of media, there's, all media is pretty much bad, the news is pretty much uh, evil and ignorant, but nobody addresses that question. It's like, well, we know that that's going on, but what's the underlying substrate? That's the thing right underneath the superficial thing. Kind of like a beautiful person that's inherently evil and sociopathic, right? It's like, oh, what a beautiful person. It's like, yeah, totally evil, though. You know, it's very beautiful, but completely evil. It's not a person you'd ever want to know. Superficially, you would, but if you really knew that person, I've met more than a few people like that in life, and I'm sure you have too, but nobody's asking themselves that question. These people are fundamentally weak. They can't debate. They have an agenda. Anybody that's afraid of debate, yeah, fundamentally. There's sometimes you're like, you know, someone will say something so incredibly stupid, which, you know, happens to me in comments. You know, people might say something and just incredibly ignorant, and I won't debate them. 
Not because, you know, I, I couldn't defeat them in a debate, and debate is not about argumentation, but because it's just so completely patently absurd and I'm just insanely busy, you know, there, there, there is that exception. But on a fundamental level, when these people shut everybody down, these people that have this uh, fake power, and th they can never control people. They think they can. They have no control over themselves. But they try to control other people, and the, the tighter they grasp, the more it slips through their fingers. You know, just as one example, and of course, everything that's going on, especially, I've been seeing this ramping up for well over 15, 20 years, so it's very, very applicable today, is that these people live in fear. They, they are so self-projective of their own beliefs that they think they are their beliefs. They have this idea when you say, you know, you're wrong fundamentally, you know, facts, logic, wisdom, boom, boom, boom. Everybody today, by the way, is kind of ignorantly using the word science, it's science. And every time they say that, like a few months later or like a year later, they've been completely contradicted. I don't know, if you've been paying any attention, you'll see that that's the case. It's really, really uh, obnoxious, actually. Um, but if someone can't debate, and they refuse the debate, and the only thing they do is shut you down, shut you up, then they are completely spineless. They're fundamentally weak. These are people that are spiritually weak. What do you mean by spiritually? You know, we could talk about the euphemisms, what that's in reference to. But they rely on beliefs and dogma. They're part of a herd mentality. I've uh, been encountering this now for over 20 years. I've been, there's a few topics in uh, metaphysics, specifically translations of ancient Pali from the Nikayas, of which I am a consummate expert on, and many topics there within, which there's nobody else on this earth that knows more than I do about the term Anatta and Atman, what it means in context, where these passages exist. I literally know hundreds of books and verse citations in my head relational to this stuff, and these people will never debate you. They will never get in front of like a, a video teleconference where you, you know, both sides are recording, and both sides, will, they, they, they're completely afraid of it. They know fundamentally that they don't stand a chance. But what they will do is they will shut you down any way and every way possible. They'll brush you off. Me and my buddy um, is uh, sick and about to die. He's much older than me. We used to get kicked off of these boards all the time, and it's not because we were inflammatory. Well, it is inflammatory and you actually, you know, attack someone's beliefs, but as I've said a countless times in many countless videos, you are not your beliefs. If people would realize that, you mean know, men of war and strife in this world would go down by about 90%. You are not your beliefs. Nobody is. They won't let you get a word in edgewise. They will shut you down any way possible because they know fundamentally in the back of their being, the back of their mind, that this person, you know, has got me beat. They won't allow it to happen. That is one of the things that makes these people weak. They go against natural order. The, the old saying, I think it's Chinese, that... There are three things that can only be hidden for so long. The sun, the moon, and the truth is so incredibly true. The truth, I don't know if you've lived long enough. I mean, I'm nearly 50 years old. The truth always comes out. Sometimes it takes longer, but it always comes out. And uh, most people have the attention span of a goldfish. You know, when the truth does come out, they've completely forgotten about it or they've moved on. And that's why they suppress the truth for so long. Um, strong people are not anti-free speech. Natural order says that people need to be allowed to say what they, what they feel and what they know. And if it turns out that that's invalid, the ancients, they didn't have movie theaters, obviously, and they didn't have the entertainment and Netflix like we do now. They had debating halls. You know how you make a sword? You don't just, like... <clears throat> cut steel or metal, I mean, the blade will be weak. You might smack it against the table and it shatter like a piece of glass. You know how a sword is made? I kind of slightly enjoyed watching the documentaries of uh, true Japanese swords make, uh, sword makers. You have to beat and pound the metal and, you know, constantly reshape it, reheat it, and they, they could actually tell the, the color temperature it's glowing in the forge, whether it's orange or yellow, when to take it out, when to put it in, you know, when to beat it with a hammer. These debating halls produced some of the sharpest minds that the world has ever known. And nobody today can sit there and read like Plotinus or Rodor Boscovich 
or the Polynikeias. Of course, Roger Boscovich, they didn't have debating halls. Well, they did, actually academic debating halls. But in the ancient uh, days uh, in Magadha Valley, what is today present in India, they had debating halls. Char, uh, swords, if you will, meaning the minds of people, were uh, sharpened, were made fine. And uh, people showed up to watch, and anybody with a half a brain, even if they were a fool, you could see, well, this person knows what he's talking about. This completely defeated this other person. And they would follow that person. It wasn't about gaining followers. It was about hashing out the truth. But in today's world, you know, if two people show up, the other person won't even begin to have the debate. They'll just shut you down. They'll get you kicked off. And what that does is it causes intellectual stagnation. Intellectual stagnation, the extreme. Um, I can't talk about the, the stuff that, uh, you know, had me jumping. I've been sick as a dog, you know, last month. And I can't talk about, you know, the stuff that got me going. And I can't even mention it on social media. And this video is not about that. But these entities are, are spineless. They really, really, really are spineless. Um, these people want power. And uh, the fools who these people are that want power over others, you know, they want control over others. And these are the very people that don't even have control of themselves. One of the, the hardest things in this universe is to have genuine self-control. And I don't mean self-control over your body because you can't control your body. It's going to get old and sick and die. It doesn't matter how great a shape you're in or how beautiful you are. Or even if you live to be 120 years old, which I think that's like the oldest person on record anyway, you know, you, you have no control over yourself. That self, the existential self you see in the mirror. These people want control over others. People want control over others are technically demons. They have no control over themselves. Self-mastery is the most important thing in the world. Natural order says that people shall not control others. Nature doesn't work that way, natura naturans. There are leaders of a wolf pack, and there's uh, you know, the head geese and the V formation that flies south and flies back up north. But these are not people exercising control over others. This is safety in numbers, and it's a completely different paradigm. Human beings with their silly little beliefs, which is one of the negative effects of intelligence, is that uh, people want more control. And they have no control ultimately at all. And it is completely against natural order. Like I said, I've been debating these people for decades. One guy who's a super fan, I, can't, I don't want to mention his name. He, re he just died like a week and a half ago. He wrote all these books. He's a, a Buddhist. <clears throat> About 20 plus years ago, I debated him on some of these, uh, well, actually two forums. And uh, when I cornered him with the facts, the logic and the citation, he bowed out. But this guy was super famous. I've heard his name mentioned a gazillion times. I think he, he recently died at the age of 95 or something. But I remember debating this guy. And someone told me in live chats, like, this guy is dead. He was a soul-denying nihilist. He was called a Buddhist, but he's a soul-denying nihilist. I mean, I have his most famous book in the back room. I don't know why I still have it. I don't know why I didn't use it to line my bird cage with when I had a bird. But, you know, it uh, emphasizes this uh, no-soul nihilism, which is not present in doctrine. It's completely illogical. It negates the premise of liberation. Unless, of course, you were ignorantly and unintelligent believe that liberation is like some sort of uh, cosmic oblivion where you flush yourself, not this physical self, but you flush yourself, which then, of course, you have to posit a self before you can negate a self, which, of course, you know, completely negates his argument. Anyway, these people are just hyper illogical. They want control over others, but they don't even have control over themselves. So we're seeing this radical ramping up where people, you know, are adhering to this fake religion. And there's just this, a new fake religion. And it's, uh, people hoard around it and they follow it and they don't question it, which people that don't question things, an unexamined life isn't even worth living. They adhere to it because they fundamentally have this animalistic view that safety in numbers, I'm going to go along with it, it doesn't make sense, but why question it? That's what uh, the Nuremberg trials uh, encountered so much after the end of World War II. I was just following orders, you know? It's like, well, that's not an excuse. That was never an excuse. Just following orders, yeah? It's never an excuse. But that's what people today are doing. 
I've seen it ramp up now for the past 20 years. There's a reason why I have almost no respect, I really have no respect for religions. All well, religions are secularized metaphysics. I don't discuss them. I don't care what anybody believes in. I don't want control over anybody else. It's like, let's have a logical debate on this topic. It's like, you think you know it, and that's your belief, but what if it was the case that what you believe was based on nothing but nonsense from a commentarial book that you read? I reject all religions. I reject so-called, the term Buddhism didn't even exist. I'm just using Buddhism as an example. This video is not about that topic. The term Buddhism didn't even exist until the 1600s. It's nonsensical. The only time Brahma, Gautama, the founder of same, and there's nothing new in Buddhism. Everything in Buddhism you can find in the principal Upanishads and the Vedas. The only time he's asked what he taught should be called, in other words, a name for his teachings, is Samyunanikaya 5.4, and he called it Brahmayana, which translated means path to the absolute, or the path to the agathon. Yeah? Oh, if you want to call it something, let's call it that. That's the only time it's actually technically called something in the pre-sectarian Nikayas, and they are pre-sectarian. Um, we just have this gross herd mentality where everybody today is believing in lies. You know, the face diaper is now a religion. I mean, whatever you think of me, I mean, you can't deny that the face diaper is now a religion. Um, you remember when, and this is a saying amongst uh, military personnel in the United States, they say there's only three people in the world. <clears throat> sheep. Yeah, we know who the sheep are, right? The wolves and sheepdogs. Sheepdogs, of course, protect the sheep from the wolves. Well, that's not entirely true. I've got one. This is, you know, something I came up with. There's actually a fourth type of person. The fourth type of person is a farmer. I'll let you try to guess here for a second who the farmer is. The farmer, because he owns the land that the sheep graze on, or he has control over it, because the farmer's got his bang stick, and what he says goes on his, his land that the sheep are grazing on. <clears throat> he wants to protect the sheep only in so far as they feed them and they give them money from the meat and the wool. And, but this is the reason why, since the wolves, you know, want some of the sheep, you know, the farmer snuffs the wolves that go after the sheep, you know. And uh, he feeds the sheep dog, and he, you know, the sheep dog sleeps at his feet, sleeps in his bed. You know, he's uh, got the, uh, the dog house in his backyard there. He makes him his pet. I'll let you guess who the farmer is. Well, the farmer's the same as these people that want control over other people. They go by various names. They take many different forms. One of the forms that people dislike the most, and I'm not about, I don't care. I never discuss politics, even though you think I am right now. I don't care about politics, never discuss it. The farmer is a politician. So there's really only four, uh, four people, four things in the world. Sheep, yeah, which the farmer eats and culls. Yeah, and that's the reason why the sheep are happy grazing. You know, the sheep and their stupidity, hey, we get to graze on Farmer John's land here and eat his grass and drink his water. He even throws his grain and he even got a barn for us when it's snowing and icing. Meh. But the farmer only cares about the sheep to the point that, you know, he can feed them. Feed them and get the wool from them. That's the only reason why he lets them graze in the land. And then there's the wolves. And then there's the sheepdogs. <laughs> and the fourth one, of course, is the politician. The farmer, excuse me. Um, but there's this other variety and you encounter, this is the reason why I want nothing to do with religion. I don't care about religion. I don't want to discuss it. I don't care what people believe in. I don't care about ever converting anybody to anything. I just don't care. It's like, let's have a logical debate on that position because that's completely untenable, illogical. If you can't debate it, here's a fundamental fact of this video, the paraphrasable core. If you cannot debate it, then your position is untenable, weak, and based upon a lie and a belief system. I've been debating these Buddhists for decades. It's like, you know, and as I've said, people say, what is a Buddhist? I'll tell you, this is exactly what a Buddhist is. A Buddhist is a Christian that's never read the Bible, never will read the Bible, doesn't want to read the Bible, and doesn't believe Jesus exists. <laughs> I never, I was like, what? I was, I was, you can't be a Christian and not believe in Jesus, right? It's the same thing. I mean, you can't talk about liberation and transcendence without a transcendent subject 
which is apart from the psychophysical. You know, the body, you know, falls to poo, you know, gets buried in the grave. Yeah, you know, what are we talking about when we're talking about amatha, immortality? We're still actually, you try to euphemize, we'll translate it as, uh, the Theravadans will translate it as the deathless, no, amatha, A plus matha, immortality. You can't talk about liberation and uh, nibbana. However, the, well, nibbana is, of course, the most important. They actually fundamentally only admit it to six things. Well, seven, really. The psychophysical, rupa, veda, masana, sankara, vinyana, a the psychophysical, forms, feelings, perceptions, impulses, and consciousness. Ignorance, i.e. avidya. And nirvana, or in the Pali, the word is nibbana. But to them, Nibbana is just like blowing the flame out on a candle, like, whoosh, like spiritual oblivion. Which, of course, oblivion is a concept. There's no such thing as oblivion. For something to exist at all, it has to have at least one attribute. That's why I love, I love the most talking with people who talk about emptiness. They say, did you experience emptiness? Yeah, because they'll talk about, oh man, I experienced emptiness. I said, really? It's exactly right. Well, who was in the emptiness? Well, I was. So you were in it, right? Right. But if you were in it, it couldn't have been empty because you were in it. Right? Well, yeah. But how did you know you're in emptiness? For, for anything to be known or acknowledged, it must have one attribute. By true denotative definition, emptiness or oblivion, whichever word we choose to use, can't exist because to know that you were in it, there must be an attribute whereby which, because if a blind person stuck his hand in the fire, it's like, oh my God, I got burned by the fire. It's like, how did you know it was a fire? Well, I got burned. I can feel it. That's an attribute of a fire. You know, you get burned. It's hot. Well, someone to know that they've been in emptiness or oblivion, they would have to have an attribute whereby which you would acknowledge this is emptiness slash oblivion. And when you got back from it, it's like, how did you know you were there? Because by definition, emptiness and oblivion has not... The, see, and these people, when you start talking with sense, with a sharp mind, which I definitely have, with facts, logic, and wisdom, they shut you down, they block you, they ban you. This is a reason why nobody with, and I mean this truly, nobody with a half a brain can exist more than a day or two on any forum discussing, and this is just one example, I'm talking about what's going on in the world right now today, I'm just using this as an analogy. You can't exist on there for more than a week without being banned and terminated because you are talking sense on a Buddhist discussion forum. I know people that are experts on this topic, a couple of them are dead now, one of them I think might still be alive, but barely. And we all encountered this, it's not the person, it's not your personality, that's the reason why, like no, I was actually discussing doctrinal citation, facts, logic, and wisdom. And they won't join it because they're not interested in the truth. The same as all these people shutting everybody down and banning you, the, this, this so-called cancel culture stuff. These people are weak. Another perfect example is, you know, the guy that everybody in Canada, well, at least some people anyway, thought had all the power. Well, his prime minister. You know, old Justina. Isn't his name Justina? Justin, excuse me, Justin Trudeau. Well, after the truckers surrounded Ottawa, the real people with real power, you know, the people that deliver all the food and blah, 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 everything, well, he went into a secret hiding location. <laughs> I don't know about you, but by any language and any definition, that is weak. Like, it's really weak. It's like, so, some truckers, and they showed they were partying out in the street, like, woo, woo, freedom, freedom. You know, what, that scared this guy, because weak people get scared easy. That scared this guy so much that he went into hiding, which is a fact. You can look this up. <laughs> you, how, you know, how weak do you have to be to go into hiding because there's, you know, a bunch of trucks in the city, and they're all, like, fist bumping and going, freedom, you know. Uh, natural rights, you know, human rights. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, this is scary. Take me to the secret hiding location, quick. All these people have the same attribute. They're weak. They are weak. They can't debate it. They can't discuss it. And they know it fundamentally, even if they cannot acknowledge it in the forward part of their brain. They'll shut you down, shut you up, Ban you, block you, blah, 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 blah. You know, 
Young people call it the, the CC, the culture of cancel. What it is, is people that don't believe in natural order and they are uh, addicted to their own ignorant belief systems. It's kind of like if I were the only person in the, on earth and I have never knew of another human being and I somehow delusionally thought that I was fit and great shape and muscular. It's like, well, of course I'm not. <laughs> you know, like I would have no basis of comparison. I love that. should be on a t-shirt for me. It says, compared to what? You know? If I were the only person on the island of some island, like, you know, I'm the fittest, most beautiful person on this island. It's like, well, that's true, but you're the only one here. <laughs> I know I'm not fit and beautiful, and I have no hair, you know, fat, tattooed, right? These people are literally farting in a nutshell of their own mind. They are masters of a, they, they sit inside, they're kings inside of a nutshell, and they think themselves master of the universe. And that is an extreme type of spiritual weakness. There's that word again, spiritual. Use whatever word you like, I don't care. I really wanted to talk about this topic. I hope you enjoyed it and you gleaned some insight from it. Thank you so much. Always check out my information in the description. Any donation is always welcome. Or you can send me an email. Tell me how much you hated it. I like those emails too, actually. Thanks.